Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Crystal and this is my social thread. Welcome back to all my regular viewers. Thank you for always coming back and supporting my channel. Uh, if you are new here, however, um, and um, you like sort of sewing content, I talk about my um, sewing makes for my children and myself. Um, I talk sewing patterns, fabric, um, sort of that sort of thing. If that's something that you enjoy, something that you think you might enjoy, please kindly uh, subscribe. And also click the like button if you are enjoying my content and that allows YouTube to spread uh, my content around um, YouTube. <laughs> so thank you very much. So today I thought I would give you my January makes of the month which isn't so delayed now, it's the 5th of February, so it's not too um, too late in my books anyway. January was quite a slow month for me because um, it followed December and December is always busy for everybody, I'm sure, just get, getting over Christmas, getting over entertaining and having people around. Um, we had a very, very busy Christmas. Um, we're a large um, Catholic family um, and all of um, my husband's brothers and sisters are all sort of um, you know married and have large families as well. So everybody getting together over Christmas Christmas, my family as well, which aren't as large as Daniel's family, uh, but they came over as well. So it was just kind of, it was fun and it was enjoyable and lots of memories were made, but it was exhausting. And so January was kind of like a slow month just to get ourselves together, to get the house back into a regular um uh, regular schedule, get the children back into a regular schedule and to ease them into their education as well, because I home educate my, my nine children as well, but well, not all nine of them, but you know, the ones that are in that age group. Um, and so January hasn't been productive in terms of sewing. I have also in the evening. So I normally sew in the evenings. People ask, when do you get to time? When do you get the time to sew? You have so many children, you home educate, blah, blah, blah. So I normally sew in the evenings um, around nine o'clock onwards to about midnight every evening. Well, that's my sewing time. I don't necessarily sew every evening, but that's sort of my sewing time. Um, but in recent weeks, I have just been... Um, cradling the baby a lot more so baby Theo is now nine months old um, and I've just been sort of reading bedtime stories to the children which I don't normally get to do and um, Daniel my husband normally does that that's sort of his duty um, but actually it's quite fun and I think you know just sort of reading sort of a story to them or just saying some prayers with them or just snuggling up in their beds just before they go to bed and there are a lot of children to get through so it takes a long time um, and sort of I've been spending my evenings doing that which is nice and I think the children really like it as well, even though I find that, um, yeah, I mean, I think I've said it in my previous vlog before, even though I'm with the children all the time, every day, that's not necessarily sort of, you know, the loving, caring mama, because it's like, you know, I'm the teacher, I'm the disciplinarian, I'm sort of everything during the day where it's so busy. And I don't think they get sort of that time where I'm a lot calmer in the evenings and I'm not worried about having to go to piano lessons, having to finish this, you know, essay or having to get lunch on. It's just sort of relaxed. And I think that time, that quality time is is very valuable for the children and for myself as well. So anyway, that's what I've been up to. And so in terms of January makes, I have made one two three four i've made four items in january but one of the items is a blogger project for jenny stitches because i am one of her bloggers and that does not normally get uh, released until well whenever her schedule allows it to get released on her website and then once it's released on her website i will then uh, sort of post pictures of it on instagram and talk about it on my blog so technically I'm talking to you about, th I'm talking to you about three items. Does that make sense? I'm talking to you about three items today. Um, and also um, I will talk about the makes that my sewing um, club ladies are doing at the moment, which is nice as well. Um, and yes, I am babbling on. So what I'm going to say, Monday, a very busy day today. Um, Mondays for me are busy because... Um, the children are always busy anyway, but Mondays particularly are busy. We have piano lessons for four children. Then we have swimming lessons for five children. And then there's lunch in between. There's home education in between, obviously. And then in the evenings, my daughter normally asks to get picked up from the station or the bus stop, bus station. And then my son then asks to get dropped off at his martial arts class. And so it's all a bit of a, you know, and I think I'm now at this stage where I've got teenagers and it's true what they say, you do become the mum and dad taxi drivers <laughs> for them until they get their driving license. But um, 
there you go it's all fun and games so my first make i've babbled on for five minutes i'm terribly sorry my first make um, I don't normally babble on and I just think maybe I might change my vlogs up a little bit and be a bit more chatty and I hope I know if you like it thumbs up you know if you don't I don't know if you just want to see coat sewing content that's fine too because it is a sewing channel after all so my first make I made in January is a new make you've not seen this one before so it's not a billy sweatshirt it's not a um it's not a anyway you know I have lots of makes that I have on re repeat but this is a new one for me and it is an Ellie and Mac, I believe. I have to find it now. No, it's not an Ellie and Mac. It's a peekaboo shirt for my son, my six-year-old son, Zachary. It is the classic Oxford peekaboo shirt. And this goes from three months to 12 years, which is really, really great peekaboo patterns they do lots of children's patterns they do adult patterns as well um, they do some great maternity patterns which is really great as well so this particular one is called an Ox classic oxford so i mean i don't really know what a classic oxford is except that i know what the shirt is uh, so it's a long um, a normal shirt button up button down shirt it's got collar collar stand pockets it's got uh, sleeves obviously and it's got cuffs here with a sleeve placket is that or a cuff placket i'm not sure what they call it um it's got a curved hem um, it's got a um is it box pleat or inverted box pleat it's a box pleat at the back and you can have short sleeves or long sleeves um and i like it because from the photos it looks like a ready to wear shirt i know some shirt patterns sometimes they don't look quite right and i quite like to go for patterns where the resulting item will look like a ready to wear item hmm. so this goes from a size three months to a size age 12 now I find obviously with children's garments as with adults, I suppose every child is different, but particularly with children's item, children's garments, I always measure properly uh, because I know, for example, my children, they are taller than most children, which is really odd because I'm quite short, I'm five foot three. My husband is um, five, 10 or something, but generally I, I didn't think that my children were tall for their age but they are apparently so i normally have to go sort of two sizes above um their their age and according to the measurements zachary although he's six did fit well into the age eight um age eight um size and so that's what i went for instructions wise it's very good i have used ellie and mac not ellie mac peekaboo before i have made one of their uh, maternity patterns and I think I've made a child's dress as well from them. So their instructions are, are, are quite good. Um, I just print this out on PDF. I don't know if you can print it out on A0. You might be able to print it out on A0. But I find that with children's patterns, I tend to just print them out um, in A4 and stick them together. And that doesn't take too long. Although with adult patterns, I definitely get them printed on A0 because that's just too much time um, wasted on, uh, on um, printing and cutting. So with this particular pattern, so instructions are so, you know, all very nicely put together. I couldn't have, no, I know how to do buttonholes. So that was, there was nothing new for me there in terms of putting the pocket on the chest pocket. That's nothing new to me there. So that's all fine. It does have also a yoke at the back. I forgot to mention a yoke at the back. And that is, um, so the back yoke is concealed using the burrito method um and does it say i mean because i knew how to do it a burrito method um i didn't look at the instructions too well but i think the instructions are pretty simple in terms of doing you know getting the burrito method um having a look at it now it seems pretty simple enough so it's nothing to worry about too much what i did need to look at in instructions very carefully was the long sleeve plackets um and that's the um i'll show you here so this is my version here quickly I made it from a Hobbycraft cotton, um, which I was um, in Hobbycraft uh, before Christmas. I think I needed some zips for my um, peony dresses. And I just, obviously, just when you're in a fabric shop or a, a shop that has fabric, you just look anyway. And I saw this really, really lovely cotton. And I thought it'd be really nice. I mean, the boys, I'll show you now. It's this one here. This is my, my sh um, shirt here for my son, Zaki. And as you can see, it's a Marvel cotton print. Um, and I thought it was really, really fun, really, really bright, great for the boys. I was planning to make one for Zachary and Zander, but I'll tell you why I'm not gonna make one for Zander anymore. Uh, but this is the, the shirt here finished. 
and as you can see i have actually pattern matched it at the front let me button it up i don't know if you can see that is actually perfect pattern but i won't say perfect sorry my i'm holding the um thing with my chin i wouldn't say perfect pattern matching but it is a pretty good pattern match all the way at the front there see i mean i don't even know who these characters are i know that's wonder woman i have no idea who this is or this is i know that's batman and superman um and is this captain america no it's um i don't know who it is it's <laughs> it's a guy with a lightning bolt i'm sure you guys might know more than me so that's actually let me button this one up as well uh, oh i can't see i want to show off that pattern matching at the bottom there i'm quite i'm not showing it off as well as i should right let's button this one up there you go all beautifully pattern matched down the front also the pocket is pattern matched as well as you can see the pocket there all the way up there so that's the pocket there so the part that i got to explaining in the um pattern was the long sleeve placket so the long sleeve placket is obviously this is the long sleeve and the placket is this bit here um and that was sort of the trickiest part it wasn't as tricky as such it's just that i didn't know how to do i've never done one before and it was quite fiddly but the instructions were actually very very good so if i get the um do i have the pattern pieces oh i so what it looks like is i don't even oh there you go so this is the pla placket piece sleeve placket it looks like this so there's lots of different fold lines, lots of different points here. And actually this whole thing just kind of folds into itself like this. And then this bit here, you fold down into a triangle. And essentially that is sort of that bit there, if that makes sense. Um, so when I'd done the first one, there was a lot of ironing and I de definitely recommend to iron rather than um, to iron those lines rather than um, just um, finger press so you get nice crisp lines you know exactly what you're doing um, and you end up with a nice neat um, neat sleeve placket so that's that one there and I'll open it up da, 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 da. sleeve placket and then inside I've got that one there buttons it's a bit messy that button there and then the other side as well. I think the other side is much more neater. Yeah, that's probably a neater side. So that's the sleeve packet there. Um, so it's kind of like I would I would say it's kind of like doing a welt welt pocket. So um, you sort of sew it down around these edges, and then you cut, cut it once it's attached to your sleeve. This is the cuff you cut down here and to the corner points and then you push all the fabric through to the other side and then you're left with with this i mean it's, it's quite hard to explain but it's really quite a neat um, way of how they constructed those instructions for the construction of this um, so i'm quite pleased that i've done that quite nicely i chose just a remnant um, chambray from my stash to do the accents um the accents for the shirt and the reason why I did the accents because if you had, um, you just wouldn't see the detail, the, the seam details, um, if you just went for the same fabric all the way through. So now I'll, I'll pop a photo. I'll pop up a photo of Zachary wearing it, and I've got a little label as well that says, um, "Open this one up." Made for greatness, and that's the concealed yoke in there using the burrito method. Um, I think I think it's nice. It's just that I think it's a bit too pajama like. I don't know. Um, like if I had made pajamas, I mean I don't think I'd ever make pajamas because I just think all that effort and you're just going to sleep in it. But then to be fair, it's just sort of like I suppose if I made a sweater, all that effort and I'm just going to sit around the house in it. So I don't know. But I think with pajamas, I don't think I would. Do pajamas have this? Do pajamas have sleeve plackets? I'm not sure. No, they don't. They don't have sleeve packets, do they? They're just a normal cuff. So I don't know. I just think that the fabric looks a bit pajama-like. So, um, 
Um, I mean, he likes it. He's not actually worn it, so I must make him wear it. So, like, I guess with jeans, just wear it sort of to go out somewhere. Um, but I was going to make Xander one, but I thought this was quite fiddly and Xander would be a, an age six, which would be a smaller size than this. So I'd have to do this, but like on a smaller scale. And I just didn't think that I had it in me to, to do another one. Um, and so I'm not going to do Xander one, one. I'm not going to make Xander one for now, especially since I'm not too keen on the fabric myself. I mean, it's okay. It's just, I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy it again, if that makes sense. Apart from if it was for pajamas, I say. Um, so the things that I like about the shirt, I think the shirt is a very good shirt shape. So it looks like a ready to wear shirt, which is great. I love all the construction details. The only thing about this is I find that, um, so with a normal shirt, Oh, also, I put I did the um, the buttonholes the wrong way. It's supposed to be um, horizontal, not vertical. But that's I mean fine. And with a normal shirt, I think that it normally buttons a bit more. Um, like I've got my button right at the edge, but I think with with a normal shirt, it's there's normally more. Well, I don't know what this is called. More overlap. But then if I overlapped it, it wouldn't be um, that sleeve placket doesn't match up. So anyway, I mean it's just small things. Um, but that's my first make. So I recommend the pattern definitely for a shirt. I think my, um, Zachary is, um, receiving his first Holy Communion this coming June, I believe. And so I am planning to make him a shirt, like a nice formal shirt. It probably won't be a plain white. It's like, I'd like to find something like something with a small print on it like a white shirt cotton shirt ting fabric but with a slight print on it or maybe like a pinstripe so then i can have as you would a normal shirt have the stripes all going down this way but for the yoke have it going that way which would be quite nice and so i do plan to make another one for zachary i've got the pattern already cut out so that'll be nice and i plan to make another one for him for his first holy communion so that's really nice that's pattern number or item number one that i made the second thing that I made um, was another Nina Lee Camden skirt. Now, I know I keep talking about this and I have spoken about it at length with you. I do have the pattern. I don't have it to hand. I'll pop up a picture of the Nina Lee Camden skirt. I have made quite a few of these. I just had some black corduroy lying around in my stash. And so I decided to make that up. It's basically an A-line skirt. It's got two patch pockets, um, but they are curved. And then it's got an invisible zip at the back. It has waist starts at the back as well. And a center front seam and a center back seam. So my version is here just in a black corduroy. Um, and there's the pockets there. Look, it's looking a bit, I don't know why it's looking like that, but there's the pockets and then the back. So I have made quite a few of these and I have been inserting lots of invisible zips lately, not only with the Camden, but also with the Fabric Godmother peony dresses where I've been inserting zips at the back, zips at the front and whatnot. Um, I, I mean, it is invisible. The zip is invisible. I don't know if you can see the zip is invisible. There's the seam there. But when I get to the end, um, I'm finding it really, I mean, that won't go right to the top. That doesn't go right to the top anyway. I think most ready to wear skirts, when you have a zip, where they have like a little hook at the end. I'm not sure, but I'm finding it's not so bad here, but I'm finding this bit here really, really bulky. So finishing the end of my concealed zips isn't my favorite job mm. at the moment. Is that my, is it my favorite job at the moment? So it's just, I don't know. What do you guys do with, you know, the end of your tape that folds over and then you have your waistband and then the seam allowance. It's just so bulky. I mean, this one isn't too bad, to be fair, but I just don't know how to finish that to make it look pretty. Um, so that's just a bit of a, a shame, really, because um, I thought I was quite nifty at, at, insert, at inserting invisible zips. But hey, ho. And um, this, again, has my band roll waistband. Um, so you can just sort of see the um, sort of the stiffness in there which i really really recommend and what else did i do to this one? Oh, so this one the reason i wanted a black version of this one is because i have a ready to wear marks and spencers um cord skirt that i bought years ago this is a size 12 marks and spencers one so it's a navy cord very similar in fact it's got the center front seam it's got very similar pockets um 
This one has an exposed zip and then it has a slit at the back. And the reason it's got a slit at the back is because it's slightly longer. So I wanted to copy this because I wanted a black version of this one. And this has got a really nice fit and it's slightly more, what's the word, pencil lined. So when I was cutting out the pattern, I was matching the pattern of the Camden to this and it looked pretty much the same. And I thought, well, this is going to be the same, although... I mean, when I cut it out, I lengthened it as well to match the, the ready to wear one. And I added a vent as well, which is really simple. I just um, turned in the seam allowance and sewed all the way around. Um, but it is a lot wider. Um, so from the hip downwards, it flares out a bit more. And so maybe, I don't know if I, no, I probably won't do it for this one, but for my next version, and there will be a next version, I would like to do exactly the same thing with the Camden. So use the Camden as my, as my pattern, but I am just going to taper it in a bit. So this is the, um, Camden. And this is the Marks and Spencers one. So it's pretty much the same size. Maybe a tiny bit. It's a tiny bit out, but if you see from the um, from the side, there's quite a lot of it's quite a lot of, of extra fabric from the hip all the way down. So it's just it will just be a case of tapering that down, and then I will have sort of a skirt that I like um, that I've copied from ready to wear one essentially um, in terms of the shape of it. Uh, the last thing that I made in January was a, I'm really sorry, it's another peony fabric godmother dress. Um, this time it's in a chambray. I wanted to have a casual version, although because it's quite a long dress and because of the ruffles at the bottom and the poofy sleeves and the long sleeve, uh, the poofy sleeve heads and the long sleeve, it doesn't kind of look like a casual. It still kind of looks like a, quite a nice put together dress. Um, so I might still have to make, I'd may probably make the short version with the ruffle and then a shorter skirt for like a more casual, casual, um, peony dress. Let me just pop up the, the, um, pattern for those of you that are new. I mean, for those of you that aren't new, you can just fast forward this because I have spoken about this peony dress many times before, but I will just show it to you for sake of, um, for the sake of the, the newbies, I suppose. The peony dress, Fabric Godmother. As such, um, semi-fitted shape, bust darts, waist darts, shouldered butt darts at the back, um, gathered sleeve head, and that has a shoulder puff inside. Um, ruffles here, ruffles here. You've got the short version and the long version, and then invisible zip at the back. I have um, manipulated the... Um, body starts to create new seam lines um so sorry i keep looking here and i know my camera is over there um so instead i've eliminated the waist the waist start and the bust starts here and i've created princess seams to go down here and then i've inserted invisible zips there for breastfeeding access because i'm still breastfeeding my nine month old baby so this one is um I really, really like this pattern because I have made it already several times. It goes from a size 6 to a size 30. Um, size 6 to a size 30. Uh, bust of 31 inches, waist of 23 inches, all the way up to a bust of 55 and waist of 47. I make a size 12 at the waist and a grade up to a 14 in the bust. And that is great for me. I will show you my version here. I forgot to add photos of my Camden, so I'll just show you a photo of my me and my Camden, and I'm just wearing a, another me made Freya top that I've just paired with it. So the next one is this one here. So it's my peony dress. You can see that even on the hanger, the poof is maintaining its poof because it has a shoulder puff inside. Long sleeve versions, and these are my new seam lines. As you can see, there's a seam line there seam line there and the little tiny zips for the concealed zips you can see and i can pull this up here voila and i'm going to do it i know it's exactly the same but i'm going to do it anyway voila um so that's an invisible zip there it is pretty invisible i don't know if you can see obviously there's a curve there and that's why it's not sitting straight it's pretty invisible which is really great and the back seat, the back zip as well, I think is pretty invisible. But as you can tell at the 
top here again i have the same issue with the bulk um from the um end of the of the zip tape and then also the fabric and the um the fabric of the facing and the seam allowance of the facing that's all kind of i don't know it's just a bit thick and also it won't zip right to the top why won't it do that i don't know is it supposed to zip all the way to the top maybe i've got something hooked there yeah maybe let me just try if it will zip to the top no it does zip to the top it does zip to the top but it's still like really bulky and it's making the so instead of going inwards that way it's kind of going out that way so i don't know whether that's a thing i don't know whether that's a thing so that's just really annoying me i mean luckily i have hair that covers the back of my zip but if i was to i mean i guess um yeah it doesn't you can't really see it but it's just knowing that that sort of detail is there it's just annoying me a little bit so um fabric godmother dress it has facings um i've just got a little label there and it's got this really cute shoulder puff inside it's like a little <laughs> um croissant inside and that goes that attaches to the in between the bodice and the um sleeve seam there and then that allows that to poof up your your um your sleeve head so that's really really nice i really really like it I haven't worn this one out yet, um, but this is me wearing it. Ah, sorry, that's just a ruffle at the bottom there. Oh, and with this, you can see here, there's some patches here. So from far away, you can't really see it. I think it's just the lighting. And also because when I wear it, it's sort of gathered, you can't really see that stain. So the story behind this is that I was cutting out the fabric and I was, I did see it on the, on the fabric. And I thought it was just like water or something. I don't know why I thought it was just water. And I just thought I'd cut it out anyway. And to be fair, I didn't have extra fabric anyway, so I had to cut it out. And then I had sewn it all together. The last thing I had to do was the bottom ruffle. And then I looked at the the fabric, the, the dress, the skirt of the, um, of the dress, and the stains were still there. And I was like, oh no, what am I going to do? So the only thing I could come to, what I could think of was cutting it short and then adding the ruffle at the bottom of that to get rid of the stains. And then I thought, actually, it seems like an oily kind of stain. So I don't know. So what I did is I used, I Googled how you would get rid of this particular stain and what it suggested me to do. So if anybody needs to get rid of any oily stains as such is fairy liquid or any washing up liquid, uh, put it on the, um, on the stain and sort of use an old toothbrush and just sort of rub that in for about, I mean, I don't know, just keep rubbing for as much as you, as much as you fancy sort of brushing that fairy liquid in. And then after that, sprinkling it with bicarbonate of soda and then rubbing it in again with a toothbrush and then putting it in your normal wash. And to be fair, it did come out, but the downside was it kind of bleached it a little bit. And I don't know, does bicarb bleach things? I'm not sure. Um, well, obviously it does because it is kind of slightly, you know, there's some light patches. There's some patches that are slightly lighter than the actual colour itself, but it is what it is. It's done now. And I don't think it's, I don't think anyone will notice, hopefully, and nobody will notice. So that's that. So three items plus another item that is my blogger um, garment for Jenny Stitches, which I will not be revealing today. Um, the other things I wanted to talk about were the projects that my ladies were doing at the sewing club that I run um, every Friday. So um, there were, so it's one, two, three, four, five. There were five ladies. Now there's only four. Uh, because one of the ladies unfortunately has uh, some health issues and she just w wasn't able to commit although she did say she had bought her pattern already and her fabric and she was just on the stage of cutting it out and she was like oh thank you so much you know she wouldn't have got to this stage without me and I just thought oh I, I barely did anything like I've not done anything but she said she's always wanted to sew but just because she gets quite tired and she just thinks she is going to just try and do it um, at a slower pace at home by herself with a friend to help her. So that was fine. So now I'm left with Renia, Wendy, Nancy and Celeste. And to be fair, Nancy and Celeste aren't adult ladies. They're teenagers, but, you know, <laughs> they wanted to join in as well. So with um, Nancy, she, has this, she decided that she wanted to copy a pair of... Uh, loose uh, linen trousers that she had and it was perfect because all she had was just loose linen trousers with an elasticated waist and I thought that was perfect enough to do and actually my first idea which is really really juvenile and really silly really was just to um, trace the um, 
trace the use some pads and paper and put it on top of the garment and just trace it out and sort of have like four rectangles and then sort of fold in a, an elastic waistband which is you know sounds kind of simple enough but what i didn't factor in is obviously you needed um it's, it's not just trousers aren't just four triangles and there is sort of the crotch part as well that um is that makes your crotch and your bum fit into trousers so um i didn't think of that and then afterwards i went home and i thought well that's not going to work and then i realized actually i have this book make it simple by tilly and these are actually the trousers here but she's got it in the pinafore style and the is it called sophia trousers the sophia trousers were a perfect yeah make it simple the sophia trousers were a perfect um pattern for her Sophia trousers so she's got it here on there and what they are it says here cutting time 20 minutes sewing time one hour 15 minutes and I thought that would be perfect for a beginner and this book is make it simple so again perfect for a beginner and all it is is loose baggy trousers it's elasticated which is what she wanted but it has a flat front and an elasticated waist which i think is far more flattering if you have a flat front rather than an elastic i'm just repeating myself rather than an elasticated waist um and i suggested that to nancy and she said that's great i'm looking here again i'm really sorry um and she said that was great so we went for this and um, this also has the um option to add pockets which is great um and the only other amendment she wanted to do well was to add pockets and she wanted to lengthen it as well because i think it's quite cropped i think it's a crop style trouser it's a cropped style trouser she's wanted to lengthen it so we went about getting all the fabric and things she ended up getting um some navy blue i think it's a viscose linen from pound fabrics which is the best place i have found price wise for viscose linen she got the navy version and she um i think she was a, i'm not sure what size she was um and she um traced the pattern cut out the pattern and then we added i think about six inches to the bottom of the trousers um to for the length that she wanted and um she then set about cutting out the fabric unfortunately when it came to sewing the fronts and the backs together we realized that she failed to cut the front legs with the extended uh, piece so she had a really long back set of back legs and a really short set of front legs so the only option we had was to cut it down to the same length as the front legs so it ended up being crop trousers anyway um so she finished most of it on i think our second session she finished most of the trousers all she needed to do was to overlock the bottom of the trousers and and do the hem and then she said um once she's done the hem she's going to take a photograph and she's going to see whether she likes the crop version if not she was going to cut them into shorts and then hem them and she said she would send me a photo and i've got a photo for you here um, and so she really, really likes it. It was a really simple make. The only other thing that we forgot to do as well was because uh, we did cut out pocket pieces, but because the instructions are separate, so it gives you instructions on how to do the... Um, it gives you instructions on how to do the simple version first, which is without the pockets, and then further along, um, adding pockets is... Um, so it's another section, it's the next section afterwards that says make it your own, where you can add inseam pockets. So um, we didn't see the separation of those instructions, so we totally forgot about adding the pockets. But she's hoping to make another pair. Um, and I said you could use those pocket bags for most things that are of dark fabric colour because you can't really see the pockets as such. She really enjoyed it, I think. Um, and also with the front part of her waistband, we added some band roll because I love band roll and then the back is the elasticated waist. So that was one project done. And um, the second um, project that um, is done as well. So Renia um, was sewing with, she sews, she brings her daughter along with her and she made a pinafore dress and it's this pattern here. 
so there's loads of these patterns around on Etsy. It's basically uh, just a skirt, elasticated back, flat waistband. It's got patch pockets. It's got a bib. And then it's got the straps, but the straps have a, a frill on it. Um, so she bought her pattern off Etsy. She stuck out, she printed out the pages and stuck them together. And she got that fabric from Facebook Marketplace, actually. And she made that dress for her daughter. And here is a photo of her wearing it. So that one's a finished item project as well. And then um, the next project is Wendy's project. Um, and Wendy decided to go for a dress. And she decided to go for the Betty dress. So over at Betty dress. Now I bought this pattern years ago now with all the variations because I know there's um, an extension pack to do a... Um, sort of a, a scoop back or a high back and there's also um, extent expansion pack for longs for sleeves three-quarter length sleeves but I haven't used any of it at all um so this is nice that somebody's actually using it um Betty dress is a 60s dress uh, is it called a 60s dress it's, it's a very vintage style dress and you've got this is the front here it's like a boat neck it's sleeveless um, it has bust darts and waist darts, and then the back is a low V, uh, waist, uh, ba um, waist darts, yeah, back waist darts, and then invisible zip. And it is a, I think it's a full circle skirt. It is a full circle skirt. It's a full circle skirt. So this particular pattern goes up from, goes from a size eight, which is a bust of 33, waist of 26, all the way up to a size 20, which is a bust of 45, waist of 38. Um, and so we um, cut out all her pattern pieces. She wanted to have um, the same back as the front. So we just, um, with the back pieces, the back bodice and the back facing, we just basically tr retraced this part to the back and extended that with some paper so that was an easy fix she also wanted pockets which is very easy we just draft we just used the pattern pocket piece for one of the tilly patterns and use those and because of the circle skirt um, there are side seams because you have a front skirt and a back skirt and we just put uh, we are going to put them into the side seams and um, she ended up going for some lady McElroy cotton lawn in their fern fabric and it's just a photo of Wendy cutting out um but the one thing um I failed to realize was I can't remember I've always thought that um Lady McElroy fabric was quite wide um but this particular fabric was only 140 centimeters wide I don't know because I usually use I mean I use Lady McElroy a lot but to be fair I haven't made that many full circle skirts so anyway my point is the full circle skirt didn't fit on the width of the um of the fabric and then we were like oh you know i didn't want to disappoint her and we were like well there's two options we can either have a gathered skirt um or we can um leave this fabric for another project and we can buy in more fabric she didn't like the idea of a gathered skirt and she was actually willing to go um and get some more fabric and leave this gorgeous fabric for another project and then in the end i said look actually we don't have to go for a gathered skirt because it's a slightly different look um, because obviously a circle skirt, there are no gathers and it just gives you a clean, smooth waistline. Um, but instead of doing a full circle skirt, we can do like a three quarter circle skirt. So all I did with the pattern piece was I just I don't have the pattern. Oh, I do have a pattern piece here. I just basically um, wear the semicircle instead of doing a full semicircle. How am I going to describe this? I basically didn't touch the waist at all. I just, so where the, so this is the waist here, where the skirt pieces go this way. I kind of just cut it in a bit, if that makes sense for both sides. And so it was able to fit on the fabric, which was great. So that's what we've done for that one. She hasn't, so next session will be actual sewing. She's not done any sewing yet at all. So she will be sewing. And then last but not least is Celeste, who is actually my um, niece and goddaughter. She um, should have been with the uh, girl sewing class, which I do every Thursday at my house, but she's unable to get there every Thursday and commit to that. And when she found out we, I was doing an adult class on a Friday, which is where she, near where she lives, um, she wanted to go on that instead. So she is making the True Bias Maeve skirt. I'll pop up a photo of it there in a lovely um, forest green um, corduroy from Fursal Fabrics. 
and she um yeah is enjoying that so that's what she's doing so Maeve um skirt is a tiered skirt three tiers you can mix and match the tiers it's an elasticated waist does it have pockets and it has got pockets so that's what she's doing for hers and I think that's it that's all I have to talk about um that is it I'm curious yes um, so that's quite a short one for me uh, thank you very much for everybody that um, has watched and is watching if you are enjoying my content please do like please do subscribe and please do share among your sewing friends or your other friends as well um and yes I will see you again next time. My next vlog is hopefully going to be a February plans. I haven't made a plans video since the baby was born. Actually, that was back in April because I just don't have the time. I mean, I'm going to moan again. I don't have the time, but I will make some time to um, give you a plans video. It'll be a very short plans video, but I'm hoping to get that out tonight, record that out tonight as well. Okay, so that's it. Thank you so much. Happy sewing, everybody. Take care. God bless. Bye-bye.